Eric Cook was born on the 25th of February, 1931, in Victoria Park, a suburb of Perth, Australia, and was the eldest of three children. Cook was born into a troubled home. His parents wedded exclusively in light of the fact that his mother, Christine, was pregnant with him, and his alcoholic father, Vivian, beat him on numerous occasions, particularly when as a child he attempted to shield his mother from Cook Sr.'s enraged beatings. Christine Cook, on many occasions, she would rest in the staff room at her place of employment, known as Como Hotel, in order to avoid the beatings. Much like his mother, Cook would stow away underneath the house or roam neighboring roads just to get away from a night of his dad's beatings. Cook was also a child of the state and regularly attended halfway houses or foster homes. Cook was often hospitalized for head wounds and was believed to have had associated brain damage in light of the many accidents he had. It was later suggested that perhaps these accidents were associated with self-harm or further beatings. Cook experienced repetitive migraines and was once admitted to an asylum and his reported fainting spells later halted after an operation in 1949. Cook was conceived with a rabbit lip and congenital fissure for which he had one operation when he was three months old and another when he was three and a half. Surgical operations to repair the distortions were not absolutely effective and left him with a slight facial deformation and he talked in a mutter. These debilitations made him the object of torment at school. In one columnist recounting, he is depicted as a short, slight man with dull, wavy hair and a contorted mouth. Cook's deformations made the killer embarrassed, modest and touchy at a young age. Coupled with this, the beatings and harassment that accompanied him at home didn't make things any better. Despite the fact that Cook was great at subjects that required retentive memory and manual aptitude in school, Cook was ousted from his school for taking cash from an instructor's handbag at six years old. When he was exchanged to another school, Cook was again the victim of numerous jokes with his murmur and scar. He was ridiculed at each subsequent school he went to, including Highgate Primary School, Forest Street Primary School, and Newcastle Street Junior Technical School. He left school at 14 to act as a conveyance kid for central provision stores with the specific end goal to provide for his family. He would give his week after week wages to his mother who couldn't completely provide for the family with the cash she earned from cooking and cleaning. As a young man, Cook spent his evenings involved in various wrongdoings and vandalism. He would later serve a year and a half in prison for torching a congregation after he was rejected in a choir tryout. Amid his later high school years, Cook would sneak into houses and take whatever was of value for resale. These crimes eventually escalated to damaging clothing and furniture within people's homes in acts of vengeance, of which he would then cut out the newspaper accounts of his crimes and show them to his colleagues in an attempt to gain friendships. At Cook's grandmother's home on the 12th of March, 1949, police at last caught up with the youthful vandal, discovering evidence for his crimes at his home. His fingerprints were then coordinated to those found in other open cases. At 18 years old, on the 24th of May, 1949, Cook was sentenced to three years in jail, subsequent to being captured for pyro crimes and vandalism by Detective Burroughs, who considered Cook one of life's unfortunates. He was indicted on two charges of stealing, seven for breaking and entering, and four for illegal arson. He left many fingerprints and easy clues for detectives, which would only serve to teach him to be more careful in his future crimes. At 21 years old, Cook joined the Australian Army, but was released three months after the fact, after it was found that, before enrolment, he had an adolescent record for robbery, breaking and entering, and fire-related crimes. Amid his time there, though, he was quickly elevated to the rank of Spear Corporal and was taught to handle firearms. On the 14th of October, 1953, Cook, now a mature 22-year-old, 
wedded Sarah Lavin, a 19-year-old waitress at the Methodist Church in Cannington. Cook's family soon grew as he and his wife had several children, four boys and three girls. After marriage, Cook was also apprehended a few times as a peeping Tom and for other minor offences. In 1955, he was captured for stealing a car and was sentenced to two years hard work for his crime. After his discharge though, Cook took to wearing ladies' gloves while carrying out crimes with the goal to avoid leaving fingerprints. Cook's slaughtering spree included a progression of alleged random hit and runs, stabbings, stranglings, and shootings. Casualties were shot with different rifles, stabbed with blades and scissors, and hit with the hatchet. A few were murdered while waking as Cook was robbing their homes. Two were shot while sleeping without their homes ever being disturbed and one was shot dead after answering a knock at the door. On one occasion, after taking the life of a particular victim, Cook was said to have drank lemonade from the fridge while sitting on the veranda. One casualty was choked to death with a cord from a bedside light, after which Cook sexually assaulted the corpse, dragged it to a neighbor's garden, then sexually infiltrated it with an empty bourbon bottle. Two of Cook's homicides also brought about false sentencing. One of them, for which a man named John Button was wrongly sentenced, included the victim, Rosemary Anderson. Another was the homicide of Gillian McPherson Brewer, who was hit with an axe and stabbed with scissors, which prompted the false conviction of Darrell Beamish. Amid the 1960s, people in Australia most of the time left their cars opened and or with the keys in the ignition which provided Cook with consistent opportunities to steal cars. Every once in a while, he was able to return the stolen vehicles without the victim ever becoming mindful of the robbery, including a few cars that were involved in hit and runs. Cook's first attempt at manslaughter was on Nell Schneider, a 29-year-old mother of four who came to Australia from Amsterdam in September of 1955. Subsequent to being tossed from her bicycle, Schneider was left with a cracked skull and brain damage. After a rifle was discovered covered up in Geraldton Wax Bramble on Rockwood Avenue, Mount Pleasant, in August of 1963, ballistic tests demonstrated the weapon to have been used in the homicide of Shirley McLeod. Police came back to the area and tied a rifle rendered inoperable to a tree at the location with angling line and developed a long-term stakeout in which they sat tight on the off chance that somebody returned for it. Cook was soon arrested when he came back to gather the weapon 17 days after the police had set the trap. Cook admitted to many of his crimes, including eight homicides and 14 attempted murders. He was charged for the killing of John Lindsay Sturkey, one of Cook's five Australia Day shooting victims. In his admissions, Cook exhibited an amazing memory for the details of his crimes, regardless of how long ago the crimes had been committed. For instance, he admitted to more than 250 robberies and could detail precisely what he took, including the number and categories of the coins he had stolen from every home. Amid trial procedures, Cook argued innocence on the grounds of insanity at trial, Cook's legal advisors argued that Cook experienced schizophrenia. However, this argument was rejected after the executive of the state's Emotional Wellbeing Administrations Unit affirmed that he was rational. Cook was sentenced for homicide on the 28th of November 1963 following a three-day trial by jury in the Supreme Court of Western Australia. He was sentenced to death by hanging and, despite having grounds to appeal, he ordered his lawyers not to apply, claiming that he deserved to pay for what he had done. From death row, the serial killer, at age 33, was let out at 6am after 13 months in New Division. Cook was then hanged in Fremantle, Western Australia, at 8 o'clock near the Swan River Settlement, where solitary confinement was the punishment for its prisoners. Ten minutes before the sentence was carried out, on the 26th of October 1964, 
Cook swore on the Bible that he killed Gillian Brewer and Rosemary Anderson, claims which he had previously rejected as others had already been convicted of those murders. Cook was the very last person to be hanged in the state of Western Australia. G'day mates, it's Bee Buster here. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video guys. And you know, for some reason, the name Cook, it reminded me of a friend who I used to have that owned a bakery. And unfortunately, his business was burnt down in a fire. And it's toast now. <laughs> uh, so just to let you guys know, uh, this video will be part of a mini series uh, I'll be doing on Australian serial killers. And uh, perhaps after this, if the video gets enough likes and shares and whatnot, I'll, I'll try to make a video on serial killers in other parts of the world. Um, but yeah, as always guys, it would be awesome if you could like, share, comment and subscribe if you're new. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for updates throughout the week. You can also catch me on my second channel, all of which have links in the description below. Thanks again for always tuning in guys and for all the love and support. And I'll see you mates in the next one.